Hi guys, it's Crystal. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you guys how to make these awesome pom-pom earrings. So they look just like this. They're super cute. So these are in style right now and they are on a little post. So these ones are real earrings and there's so many different ones you can make from different colors, different sizes. You can do them on a post or you can even do them on a hoop. So these ones are on a hoop earring. Hopefully you guys can see how that kind of turn it to the side. Um, so there's the hoop. You can also do clip-ons. So if somebody doesn't have the ears pierced, you can always do a clip-on. I'm going to show you guys how I make these cute little tags here at the very end. This is how I sell them in my booth. I have a beautiful soul. That's what my booth is called. Um, and then I put my number on there and how much they are, $12. So let's go ahead and get started. This is what I do. I kind of work and I just put them in the bowls like this and then I'm going to take them down to my booth and then hang them up. Currently it is fall. You may be watching this in the winter or next summer, but currently it is fall. So I've got some fall colors here. So we've got some mauve colors, a mustard yellow, an orange, black. So we've got some fall colors going on here. I even made a pair with a mixed yarn. So this is a mixed yarn and this is what it would look like. There's tons of different colors out there on the market. Now this yarn I picked up at Hobby Lobby. It was $3.99, but it was currently 30% off. I can't remember the brand because I had already pulled the packaging off. So I can't tell you what brand it is, but it's just one of the basic ones that they carry. Like I said, it's $3.99 and it was 30% off. There's always a sale over there, but I did purchase these at Hobby Lobby in case you were wondering. So let's go ahead and jump into some of the things you're going to need to get this done. All right, so I'm going to scoot those back a little bit so we can see. So you're going to want some yarn. You're going to want some different colors unless you're just making you a pair or two, okay? So you're going to want some yarn, and then you're going to you're going to need the pom-pom makers. So these ones are from We Are Memory Keepers. It comes three in a package. I did a video way back there, maybe a year ago. I'll try to link it down below. But um, you're going to want some pom-pom makers. I believe Clover, which would be in the sewing section at like Hobby Lobby. Um, Michaels is going to have these. It's going to be wherever their We Are Memory Keeper stuff is. So these are from We Are Memory Keepers. I will link down below to Amazon. But it comes in a three-pack. It was super affordable, maybe $10, $13. So, and I've had these for over a year or so. All right. So it makes small, medium, large. To make these earrings right here, the ones that are, you know, on the post here, these ones I use the medium, and then the ones that are on the hoop earrings, I use the small. And then if you were going to be making like a keychain, you'd want to use the big one. You could also make some really big earrings if you wanted to, but these would make some really cool keychains. All right, so there you're going to need your pom-pom maker. You're going to need a pair of joy pliers. These ones right here are made by Bead Landing. I believe I got them at Michael's. I'll link you down below to some that's similar on Amazon, but if not, these are Bead Landing. This is what they look like. So you're just going to need some jewelry pliers to do some bending. You're going to want a very, very good pair of scissors. I've had these for over a year or two. These are ginger. I know I'm saying that wrong, but they're uh, ginger scissors. I'll have them linked down below to Amazon. Everything here I'll try to have linked down below except for the yarn. Obviously, go get that from the store. These are ginger scissors. They're going to last you a long, long time. The only thing that you want to use for these is your fabric and yarn. So, um, definitely recommend a very, very good pair of scissors. It's going to make your life so much easier. So, definitely a good pair of scissors. And then you're going to need your earrings. So you've got hoops. So if you're wanting to do the hoop look like this, you're going to want some hoop earrings. I got mine from Hobby Lobby. They were 50% off. And they were like, say, three pairs, which would make six. There was like three pairs in a package for $2.99. And it was half off, so $1.50. And then, um, so there's hoops. You also have these ones right here that you can use that you just kind of stick in your ear. I'm going to kind of bring those up to you so you guys can see. So there's these ones right here, which usually come a ton in a bag. We use these for our leather earrings, so you can use those. Um, the ones I've used right here, these are, these are earring posts, and they look just like this. Okay, so they've got a little circle on them. Hopefully you guys can see that really good. They've got another circle here off the side that you could stick your like a jump ring or something through. So that's what these are. They're called earring posts. Like I said, I'll leave them linked down below. 
Now the ones I got, I picked these up from Walmart. It came with two different kinds here, and I think they were like $3.99. I really wouldn't advise that. I bet we could find a better deal at Amazon. And these are by Blue Moon at Walmart if you do want to pick these up, okay? So you're going to need those. And then also if you want if you want to do the clip-on, so these are for people that don't have their ears pierced. Um, they look just like this, right? So these I got from Hobby Lobby. It was a huge bag, $2.99. I think I got them for $1.50 as well. So there's also those. I'm sure there's tons of other ones that you could use, but those are the ones that I've used so far. Also going to want earring backs. So you can get them in a bag like this where they're silver, like a normal earring back, or the plastic ones the little rubber and those come in bags like this one right here was Hobby Lobby I think $2.99 is $1.50 but it comes with a ton in a bag same with the rubber ones let me show you same with the rubber ones so you'd be like $1.50 for all these so it comes with a ton so you're going to want earring backs then you're going to want some eye pins so they look just like this okay so it's these pins that have an eye in them if you're like me, you may have some of these already laying around from when you were making leather earrings that may have came in some kits, but these are eye pins. Now, the ones that I purchased are from Hobby Lobby. Once again, I think they were like $3.99. Came with $100, but they also have a flat pin. Let me show you really quick. So mine was half and half. So 50 of them was the eye pin and 50 of them had the flat head on them like this. And at first I thought, well, that's going to be a waste. But let me show you really quick. If you get these on accident or if you get the mixed thing like I did, just take your pliers here, go all the way up to the top and at the end and go ahead and just twist that around just like that. And it's going to create that same eye pen. So these are not going to go to waste or if this is the only thing you can find, you can still utilize them. So I wanted to show you that. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right in. So I've already made two, so that way all we got to do is make two more. So I've made the small one, so we're going to do the um, hoop earring, and then we're going to do one with the earring back. Now, I don't need to do all the earring backs because it's going to be the same exact way, but which just preference on which earring back. Let's start with the hoop first. For the hoop, we're going to use the small one. If you've never made a pom-pom with a pom-pom maker before, this is how you're going to do it. So you're going to open these up just like this. This is how they open. And then the way that I like to work is I think of a rainbow. I want the rainbow up. You're going to take your yarn. Just going to kind of get this going. I don't cut it off. I keep it on the yarn there. Yarn spool. What would you call that with yarn? Skein? I think skein, right? Okay, so you're going to have the rainbow facing up. And then I'm going to take the end of my yarn and hold it there. And I'm going to start wrapping around. I'm going to get a little spot going. And then I'm going to hold it from here, if that makes sense. And I'm just going to keep wrapping. So you don't want to stay in one spot. You're just going to go all the way down. Hopefully I don't make you guys sick. Okay, you're going to just keep going back and forth. So now I'm working my way to the right. Get all the way here. Go make sure you go down. Do not wrap it on the bottoms here. So don't get it over these. And what you're looking for is, I'm going to bring this up so you guys can see. See how it's in right now? We want that to be flat. So I'm going to keep wrapping. Hopefully you guys can see I'm going to keep it up here. All right. All right. So now you guys can see that this is flat so that looks good so all you're going to do is shut this so you just shut it so now it looks like this and you're going to take your scissors and trim this off just like so all right now with the other one we got it facing up we're going to do the same thing to the other side scissors and cut now i'm going to go ahead and cut a piece about th about this big i'm going to cut that all right, so now what we're going to do is I need to take my scissors and what I like to do is take the smaller side here and you're going to get up underneath your yarn right here. So I don't do it on this side with the two. I do it on the other side, if that makes sense. And I trim all the way down. All right, just like that. Flip it over, 
We're going to do the same thing to the other side. All right, just like that. Now, it looks like this. We're going to take that yarn, and you see this, this gap right here? We're going to get this right on top of the yarn. We're going to push it in there just a little bit, flip it over, get our knot going. Hopefully you guys can see this. And now you guys can see I'm going to go right in there. So I've got it right in the middle, pull tight. And then I like to do it two more times. You could do it just one more time. I like to do it two just to make sure. Pull in tight, not to break your string, but pull tight. Then one at a time, you want to open these up just like that, pop it open, all right? And what I like to do is kind of rub them around like this in my hands. It's just gonna help fluff it up a little bit more. So I'll kind of do something like this. Don't pull because it'll pull these out, but just kind of rub in. All right, so now I'm gonna kind of get a basic shape of a circle, circle, yeah, round. And then I'm going to move this out of the way. You wanna take your scissors and you wanna trim off anything that's sticking out. So you're just carefully going around and any of, like say for example, this one right here, you guys see, hopefully you can, you just wanna trim off that little bit, just like that. I remember when I was little, we used to take a fork. You could actually take your kitchen fork and do this. I haven't done it that way in a long time, so I'll have to try. If you guys wanna see that, let me know down below. Um, but you could actually take a kitchen fork and do this. I remember doing it as a kid. Anybody else? Let me know down below. All right, so here we go. So that's what it's going to look like. So it looks a lot cleaner and fluffy. So you want them to match. If one looks a little bit bigger than the other, then just go back and kind of carefully trim around. So there we go. So now I'm just going to clean this up. Next thing that you're going to do with this one, you're just going to trim off that extra string. Now, if you're doing the... Um, so if you're doing the ones like this, you do not want to trim off that string. Don't do that or it's going to be messed up, okay? So trim off that string, just making sure it's all even. Now you're going to take the earring, open it up just like this. So it was closed, now we've got it open. So you want to take the pointy part of the earring, find the middle of the ball. So just kind of smash on it here, finding the middle. Take that pointy part and we're just going to push it all the way up through the middle just like that and you can shut it and then just kind of fluff it around and just like that super cute right so we're gonna go ahead and do that one more time open that up kind of find the center push it through so these ones are super fast super easy so you can see just like that you have your hoop earrings really really cute all right so there's that one all right, so now for the big one, we're going to take our medium one. I say big one, but we're using the medium. So we're gonna set this out of the way. To close this, all you've gotta do is push this back in the middle and then shut it and shut it. All right, so now we're gonna take our medium one, do the same thing. You're gonna open these up just like that. Rainbow up. I'm going to get my string on there, start wrapping, and then I can back my finger up and keep going. All right, we're gonna shut it. Got that string up and trim. Same thing, rainbow up, string down, string down, start wrapping. All right, looks good. So you can see how that's nice and flat there. All right, so you're gonna shut it and trim. I'm gonna cut off an extra piece of string about like that. All right, so same thing. You're going to take your scissors. I like to take the small side, like I said, so holding them in this direction here. So you can see how you have the two pieces here that's kind of the, the lip, if that makes sense. I like to cut on this side. So I just get the scissors right underneath there. 
just like so. All right, turn it around. All right. That's what it looks like once again. You're going to take your string and once again you're going to go in that crack there push down just a little bit bringing it towards you all right it's going to twist around and then same thing you're going to pull so you've got it down in that crack you're going to pull it and like i said don't break your string but pull it tight enough and then you're going to do it again and like i said like three times all right just like that now you're going to leave your strings on there don't cut those off you're going to do one at a time. All right, there we go. Then I like to kind of rub it around just a little bit and then fluffing it around. Here we go. So I've got my strings on here. Like I said, don't cut those off. And now we're just going to clean it up. I like to kind of move it around like this. That just kind of helps you find any spots you may have missed. Now, since we're leaving this side, you may want to kind of fluff it around here towards that top piece a little bit so you don't miss anything. And clean that up. All right, so say, see, I'm happy with that. Looks good. And I literally just made the, <laughs> I just made the wrong color. Okay, so I had already made this one and now we made this one. But that's okay with the magic of camera. Now we have a new one. So now we have both matching. So what we're going to do, so like I said, make sure that you leave these strings. So you need to take your eye pins here that look just like this. Like I said, if you need to make one, but they'll have the eye on them like that. You're going to take one side of your string. I just kind of wind mine like this and then push it through. That's kind of hard to tell, but push it through there. Hopefully you guys can see. All right, so push that through, take it all the way down. I'm trying to be careful not to bend that. If you do, you can fix it, trust me, been there and done that. All right, so now what we need to do is tie this tight and that's gonna keep that on there. And once again, I like to do it three times, pull in tight, don't tear your string. And then once you have it, you need to cut it. So you're, what you're doing is you're cutting these the same length as everything else, hopefully you guys can see, trim. Now all you need to do is very carefully take your post and stick it straight up. Well, you guys can see that. All right, so now you have your little post. Set that aside and let's do it one more time. So you have your eye pin that looks just like so. And you're gonna take that string. If you need to, you can always trim up your ends. So if you're looking a little funky like that, just trim them up. Start with a fresh one. I like to just really twist that up. And push that through. Just like that bring it down and we're going to tie it three times one two three and you want to trim that the same length like that and stand your post up just like so so now we have them just like this okay so now they look like that so now you're going to figure out what earring you want to use. We're using the ones with the posts like this where they have the little circle. You'll, you're going to want to go ahead and get it on there just like this. Kind of have it sitting on there. Hopefully you guys can see it. See it sitting on there. Then you're going to want to take your little tools here and you twist this. And then you want to keep it down towards the end. So you can twist this. Keep it down there towards the end. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. All right. So you want to keep it down here towards the end. You've got already got it kind of twisted in there. Then you're going to take your pliers. I'm sure there's an easier way, but trying to show you guys is kind of hard. Because what you'll want to do is kind of keep this going in that circle motion. Basically, you can either start a circle like this and then just get your post, your, your little circle piece on here like that, your little post. Like that. And then you're going to want to take your 
your little pliers here and finish squeezing that shut just like that all right so hopefully you guys can see that so you're going to just kind of push that down like that okay hopefully you guys can see that really good all right so that's how you would do the regular earring and then if you want to do um they're all probably going to be different but this is going to be the fake one this one has like it has its circle but it's cut in half and then twisted over to the side so all you have to do is you're going to take your pliers you get them all the way to the end here okay get them all the way to the end here you're going to take it and twist so you're just going to you're going to be able to leave it in one swoop motion and twist it into a circle like that so hopefully you guys can see that all right so it's got a little circle kind of basically looks like the other end of this when we first started then because it has like this um it this cut open you can simply slide it inside so now it's on there and then you're just going to squeeze them together so they're just kind of like split apart so you're just going to squeeze them together and there you go it's done super easy all right now really quickly i want to show you guys how i made my tags so that's how you're gonna make your earrings they're really really cute super super cute i'll try to insert a picture of my daughter somewhere in here so you guys can see um these are very popular right now so let me show you how i did the tags really quick first off you could just use your cricut and cut out some really cute tags if you're in a hurry like me and you want to simply just have a quick tag that you could always reproduce, especially since I have these, so I need to reproduce it all the time. So what I did was I took um, Cricut Craft Board and it looks just like this, all right? So you need a package of Cricut Craft Boards. You probably have some laying around, especially if you got any of those bundle packs um, laying around that you may have gotten like the mystery. What you're going to want to do is take a sheet of that. It's, it's thicker than poster board if you ask me. You can also do this with cardstock or whatever you want to, but I think this just gives it a little bit of a um, a better stability, if you will. So then, so then I took my paper trimmer, took the craft board, so I just used my paper trimmer, and then I cut these three and a half. So I brought this down to the three and a half inch. All right, trim, and yes, they cut the craft board, so it works really well. So three and a half. Do that two more times. You can cut them whatever size you want, but I thought this just worked really good for me. Three and a half and three and a half. All right, so you end up with a little scrap piece. Then I brought them in this way and I cut them two and a half. So three and a half by two and a half. I'll have the measurements down below. Three and a half by two and a half. All right, so you end up once again with a little scrap. So each row, you're going to get four, eight, so you're going to get 12 pieces out of each sheet, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and you get the point of that, so I'm going to set that aside. So then you're going to have these. Now, how I stamped out, so the reason why I called mine Beautiful Soul is because I had a stamp that said beautiful soul. So if you guys know, I just have like a little junk boutique down in downtown. I sell like my our old clothes that we have, like the kids' old school clothes, or any shirts that I make with uh, my Cricut, or um, like I said, earrings like this, my leather earrings, things like that. So you could really make some Christmas money going down and opening a little small booth like that and selling some of the things you make. So I named mine a beautiful soul, if you guys don't know, because I had a stamp that said a beautiful soul. You could go find any stamp from Hobby Lobby, any brand, and just find something that's really cute, that has a cute saying, and hey, name your booth. You could take this one. You could use a beautiful soul. If you know what I'm talking about, like the little junk booths, um, if you name yours, it's easier for somebody to come in and be like, hey, where's uh, their booth, beautiful soul? So just, you know, like I said, find a really cute stamp that has a really cute saying on it, or even have your Cricut write it out. You know, you could create your own saying, have it write it out, but this was just really easy. This is the stamp set that I used. It's from La La Land Crafts. If you guys have never checked out their stamps, you have to. They have the cutest stamps. Let me show you really quickly. Really quickly while I'm here, let me show you some of their stuff I picked up last year at Creative Nation. I'm supposed to be in showing you guys, but I've been super, super busy. So let me go ahead and show you really quick. I know I'm missing one. I think it was a soft. Okay. So let me show you some of their stuff real quick. So this is the stamp set first off that I use. So it looks like this. It has like this big old wood grain. So they're the red rubber stamps like this. Okay. Um, some of my stuff that I have down there, some of the tags I create, I stamp it with this first with a distressed brown. I usually use Tim Holtz inks. 
Um, and I stamp it first with this, and then I stamp a beautiful soul, and it looks really cool. It's got a couple other little, um, you know, like stumps or whatever. And then it has, you are loved, and then a beautiful soul. And that's what works for me, and I created that. So you can see where it says, a beautiful soul. I've used this about a billion times, as you can tell. Now, I've used this too. You can't really tell, but I've used this. Now, um, you can see that this is well-loved. And I stamp in black and white. I use my Lawn Fawn chamois to usually clean that up. But uh, there's the stamp. And I just stick it inside my Misty, which I'll show you here in just a second. And that's how I do this. I use between this one and the We Are Memory Keepers. They also have like these really cool stencils. Like check this one out. This one's Funky Squares. Once again, it's Longland Crafts. I'll have you linked down below, especially to the ones that I have. This is a set of two. So you can take, let me show you really quick. So it comes with two, okay, and you can take them, so when you go to stencil, and you can move them around like this, you could create some funky squares like this, you could kind of move them around, you could do whatever you want to, and then stencil, so they're really, really cool, so that's called funky squares, what was this one called, I don't even know if I paid, it said wood rings, I think is what it's called, wood rings, so wood rings, all line crafts, I'll have a link below, like I said, you can use it. I'm using it. Okay. Um, and then, look, she has, I used to buy these all the time and, and color these with the Copics. But I love coloring these as well with, like, Tim Holster stress markers. I'll have to do some, like, Instagram posts or something like that. If you guys don't follow me on Instagram, definitely check that out. That's where I'm going to put things like this over there. Probably things like this. If you want to see a YouTube tutorial on these, let me know. Link, um, leave a comment down below and I'll definitely get it done. So this one is Unicorn unicorn marcy she's super cute so the red rubber stamps they look like this this one she has let's be unicorns it says let's be unicorns really cute this one's my favorite so this one is a um it says in style marcy and she's like a little sewist it's really cute she has celebrate in style and a friend a friend like you is always in style so it has those little things it's really really cute and then to go with this she had some dyes so like she has this little sewing machine like that and then she has like this little dress form with the dress i love it super cute that would be cute to stick on a tag too to like create a little cute tag to sell stuff i may do that really soon um and then this one right here so this has got like a pin cushion and scissors super cute okay so i wanted to point those out really quick let me check her stuff out if you haven't already i absolutely love her she is the sweetest so let's finish on okay so we're going to take our stamp. I'm going to move this stuff out of my way. So once I have this, now I usually use the Tim Holtz white picket fence. I think it's white picket fence. I left it inside. Okay. Because some of these things I leave inside the house because I use them for this. Now, so today I'm going to be using Unicorn and I can't remember what brand this is. You guys may know. If you do, somebody knows what brand this is, leave it linked below. Unicorn. I, maybe it's American Crafts. I can't think. But anyways, I'm using Unicorn White. You could use any white ink on the black. So what I do is go ahead and get this up here so I can figure out how I want it. Then I'm going to line my stamp on top there. Get my magnet. Pick it up. And now we're going to ink it. All right. Cute. So that's how I create them. So just like that. And then I set them aside and I let them dry. Now, let me show you how I do the, set that out of my way. Let me show you how I do the holes. So I get questions all the time about what hole punches, what hole punch I use from my leather earrings video. I use the We Are Memory Keepers Cropodile, which is somewhere in my craft room here. I can't find it at the moment, but I will have it linked down below as well as this one. This is a 1 16th. I'm going to bring it in so hopefully you guys can see it. It's super tiny punch. This one actually came from Michael's and I think it was like two or three bucks, maybe six, maybe it was three bucks. I don't know. A couple dollars, but you can also get them on Amazon for $6.99. I'll have it linked below because Fiskars makes one. This is not, this has, this is like a generic Michael's, but it's a 1 16th is what you need to look for. So a whole punch and it's 1 16th. So hopefully you guys can see that tiny little dot. All right, these are perfect for one making earrings. So we punch in, in the leather um, as well as punching in the holders to hold your earring. All right. So um, what I do is I kind of try to stay towards 
one side, okay, because you need the room because of the pom-pom. So I, all the way to one side, I'm taking all the way up, and then I punch. And then I'm going to come all the way over and punch. I may have went up a little bit too high there because I got a little crazy, okay? But there's your tiny little holes. You guys can see them. All right, and then all you simply have to do is take your earring here and then take it back. All right, just like that. And then they're going to hold in place. So just like that. Now, if you were doing the um, fake earrings, you wouldn't need the hole. All you're going to do is open that up and close it. So it's going to clip on it just like that. And if you're going to be doing the clip on, because like these seem really long, I actually, this one's not this, like this is the same size. Well, hold on. Like this. Somehow I ended up with a short one the other day and the short one actually is going to be better. So you may want to take like another inch off of this, I would say. Um, and then they're just going to clip on there just like this. So just like that. Now let's go ahead and try our, these hoop ones here. I think I did. Let me look at it for the hoops here. I did it more towards the bottom. So let me show you that really quickly. So what you're going to do is try to stay towards one side clip. Try to stay towards one side and clip. Just try to keep them even. And then all you have to do for these ones is open the back. It flips open. And poke it through the hole and flip your back. Same thing. All right. Just like that. So that's how they're going to stay on there. And you can kind of mess around with those to make them look right. If that makes sense. This one's not on there right. All right. Either way. So you can see how those just kind of hold on there like that. Really cute, right? All right, so that's how I do it. I use the Arteza, which is also inside, okay? I use the Arteza, um, I think they're chalk markers, but it's in the metallic. I'll also have a link down below. I use the Arteza chalk markers, and that's how I got this, where it looks like this, the silver. Super cute. You could also use silver Sharpie if you wanted to, but I use those since I have them on hand because it comes with like pinks and golds and all these different colors. They're super affordable, um, and like I said, it's the metallics and you can get those over on amazon i hope you guys enjoyed this i hope you found it helpful i hope you guys are going to make use of pom-pom earrings whether you're going to be wearing them selling them giving away for christmas these would make a great christmas gift for stocking stuffers so um i hope you guys enjoyed this i hope you found it helpful if you did please hit the like button down below and subscribe and i'll see you on the next one